It is 6.05 and call to order meeting of the Whiteley Select Board. Uh, first item of the agenda to review, discuss, and vote to approve the meeting minutes from March 12th, 2024. Do we have any comments? None from me. None from me. I move that we accept the meeting from the, the minutes from the March 12th meeting. Second. Any further discussion? No. Vote Joyce. Aye. Julie. Aye. Aye. Approved. Uh, Sue Monahan is not here. Are we going to take this up anyway? Or um, Did you want to take it out of order? She's not coming. She's, She's not coming at all. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Um, okay, we have an application from Sue Monahan, who's apparently unable to make it today, for a May 12th Mother's Day marathon, which I believe we've done before. Um, any discussion or comments? Just wanted to let you know that police, fire, highway, and scams have all read the application and um, and approved. <laughs> this has been many, she's done it for many years. Right. So <laughs> it's a tradition. It yeah. is. Okay. Uh, I move that we approve the application for the May 12th Mother's Day marathon. I'll second that. Okay. Further discussion? Julie. Aye. Joyce. Aye. Aye. Okay, next, uh, review, discuss, vote, select board regulation under revised codification of town bylaw. Um, um, I think I know what this is referring to. Um, the code that the town has, there's some recommended changes within the code, mm -hmm. um, and some of them affect the select board's uh, regulations that they voted over the years. And one of the changes mainly is changing terminology from board of selectmen to the select board, um, just to make it, um, and some other things like superintendent of streets to the highway superintendent. They're basically just administrative sort of changes. Would that say change in a fee or the permit fee on something? Yeah. None of these look particularly right. consequential or earth shaking. Right. And these basically all these changes have been approved at some point by the select board. It's just it didn't get approved within the code. So now these changes are approving them within the code. Uh, okay. so, all right. You'll get a chance to vote on them again when it goes before town meeting. <laughs> okay. Yay! Because <Yay. laughs> we'll accept the entire package. So. Well, I, okay, so the, this is, these are just the changes with respect to the select board. Right. I move that we accept the changes uh, under revised codification of town meeting. <laughs> I'll second that. Further discussion? No. Vote Joyce. Aye. Julie. Aye. Aye. To review, discuss vote on Frontier School Excess and Deficiency Amendment request for a fire alarm panel. They are looking for $200,000 from their excess and deficiency account. Uh -huh. Which is the yeah, excess and deficiency is sort of the school's equivalent of our free cash. And I believe they need the approval of the <clears throat> constituent towns in the district to spend money. And but, I think that was one of the items that was part of their capital plan, which they had removed uh, from the project, and then they're requesting it through the use of their um, excess and deficiency account instead. Okay, so we're, we're looking at approving this now rather than a town meeting in a capital package. Right. Okay. Thank you for clarifying. Any discussion on this? I move that we accept the amendment, the Frontier School Excess and Deficiency Amendment request 
or fire alarm panel in the amount of $200,000. A second. Further discussion? No. Julie? Aye. Joyce? Aye. With, aye. Approved. Next, to change the date for the annual town meeting, which was originally scheduled for June 4th, and we are rescheduling for June 18th. That was the recommended date. Because we had... June. We had people who, who weren't able to make yeah, it. Important people unable to right. Okay. Right. Yes. Well, also, I mean, I think we shouldn't be trying to compete with graduation. I mean, people shouldn't have to decide between town meeting mm -hmm. and graduation. Good. <laughs> yeah. um, but the rest of the schedule can remain the same. Okay. okay. It'll actually give a little more wiggle room for approving the you know, once you have to vote the articles and the postings and all that. So it will help. Okay. So the calendar is still the same, which is May 6th, the deadline for receipt of warrant articles. May 14th is the select board review and voting on those warrant articles. May 21st is the finance committee recommendations being due. And then May 23rd to 28th, the select board will sign the annual town meeting warrants. Right. Any discussion? No. Motion? Oh, sure. I move that we change, accept changing the annual town meeting date from June 4th to June 18th and the remainder of the calendar voted last time will remain the same. Second. Voting is Joyce. Aye. Julie. Aye. Aye. And can we make sure to notify like Frontier and Skems and seniors that anyone who would have an interest in our town meeting mm -hmm. should, should get a notification of the change of date. Next item, request from Foothills Health District to use space in building temporarily. Did I say Fran? Is there paperwork on this? There is. Mm -hmm. um, ready? Yeah, yeah. go ahead. So, uh, thanks for uh, having me on. Um, we are, we have heard, I haven't confirmed, and I, we're not completely sure when and if, but the town of um, Williamsburg sort of is eyeing the space we've been in for 30 some years. And um, as um, said they would like to have us um, out of there, not with any fixed dates, but something like in June. Um, so I we we're casting casting about a little bit looking for a space to use, probably temporarily since uh, Williamsburg is clearly the more central location, and there are other possibilities there, but. Probably none in the quick turnaround if there is such a thing necessary. So uh, that's why I would like to ask if it might be possible for Waitley to host the foothills on a temporary basis. I'm not sure what date, but obviously for you know rent, similar rent that we pay in Williamsburg, or a little bit more, whatever. Um, and I, I think I spoke with Lynn a little bit about the space possibilities, but um, I know the space that the Board of Health formerly was in is still available. I guess it's not been turned into a, a meeting room yet. And so that might work. I mean, um, I found out recently that it is being turned into the meeting room. So I might. <laughs> It okay. may be that your space, your board of health space, your current board of health space may be the spot that they would need mm -hmm. to go. Mm. Yeah, it would be a little tight since there's obviously more staff <laughs> involved. Uh, right now, probably four people, not all the time. So in that sense, it would be a possibility. And there's no room in, there's no space in the big cavernous uh, back room there, right? There could no. be. 
It's being turned into a second meeting space, uh, very identical to this room. Oh, yeah, no, I'm not. Warehouse space? Oh, the warehouse. Like, I think he the means where... the library book space. <laughs> yeah. Back. I mean, his space there, I don't know that anyone would really uh, oh, want oh, to oh, be oh. meeting. Yeah, I, I was going to ask, what, what is the nature of the space <laughs> that you need? Because that's... Well, uh, oh, you know, probably, kind of space now. probably three desks for four people, since one person is usually not the, in the office, and... Um, Phones and file cabinets, et cetera, which would be similar to what we have now um, in the Board of Health room. I don't know if we could fit, we could squeeze them in there, um, but we could try. If worse came to worse, I suppose. No, I just thought we could, uh, there might be some other venue, venue space in the building. Uh, that would Let's be... stick around. We're going to hmm? talk about the center school in a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I might. Well, is that uh, habitable? I mean, we used to be down. We used to be in there in the basement, and we still have uh, remnant. That was rust. a little bit of a joke. Oh uh, yeah, no. <laughs> well, well maybe. I mean, who knows? Um, but uh, yeah, that's the uh, request anyway. Pretty simple. It is how how long would you need would you think to need this for? It's you unclear, know. unclear at this point, but hopefully not more than uh, six months or so. I, I can't predict. You know, the plan is obviously to get another space in, in Williamsburg, and maybe that'll happen in the next little period, and this will all be uh, moot. But I am, I, we want to have an a, a possibility. Temporary measure. I don't know how it's been proposed to be set up. Um, mm. Are the um, is the water still going to be there? And I mean, half of it is being used as storage right now. And then when we next week they're coming in and we'll be setting up um, very similar to this. So I don't know how much space will be left after that. Mm. But but water is still in there, and I believe so. As of now, yes. And they'll still be in there, or I believe I, that's that's the plan. I'm unsure though. Yeah, I I'm not sure if he uh, Wayne intends on moving some of his materials in there up to mm -hmm. the their pump house office or not. Uh, we can ask him about that. Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, why don't we? Yes. Well, see, see what's happening with this, yeah. and mm -hmm. we'll, and you see what if there's anything coming available in Williamsburg. We'll see if we can work something out. I, there's nothing that's immediate that we can. Right, right, right. Yeah, and I guess on an emergency basis, we could stick one or two staff um, in our office, and then um, one or two staff in another uh, town's office, you know, Board of Health office. So, but. <laughs> Not ideal. <laughs> well, it, it doesn't sound like anything is going to be ideal. Right, 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 right. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. Well, good. Um, there may be some options. Uh, that's all I wanted to. Uh, well, we will consider and see, see if we can do anything. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Yeah. Thanks for Thank you. entertaining the question. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Frank. Okay. Thanks, Frank. Bye bye. Okay. Next item of business: center school updates. Oh, maybe I will stick around. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jenny Morrison, I see, is here. Why don't you update us on? Um, when we did as requested and put together this proposal, which answered as many of your questions as I could remember, and we could readily answer and. Did not fill in some details that we felt would be better answered after a feasibility study. Um, but we genuinely believe that we have a layout or a plan which could be far more in line with 
what town people are looking for um, in a multi-use, multi-purpose use of the existing building. Um, and we did try and address questions of funding um, and lay out a progression. The immediate step would be to apply for CPA funds to work on the roof and therefore stop the deterioration of the building and then allow continued work, which could happen in phases. And, you know, Sort of see everything as dovetailing together in terms of starting with that the roof repair and also then working to do the feasibility to be more accurate than our guesses and how the space could best be utilized but we have a lot of ideas um but as yet we don't have architect drawing or you know certain knowledge of building codes and stuff to really make concrete suggestions um it's obviously a whole different direction than the rfp proposals and um is more work for the town than just giving the building away but with drastically more benefits that services a much larger contingent of the town. Um, I think, you know, it's particularly interesting to me that the long term planning survey that just went out uh, asks for a number of things that we believe this building can provide. Um, so I don't know. Do you want me to present everything that we put in the proposal? I know no, some of you have read it. It's, <clears throat> no, it's a it's a very good proposal given that you had all two, of two weeks. weeks to put it together. Yeah. Um, and I think that my view is I would like to give you more time to really flesh a lot of this out and get the timing and get the get the ideas down first <laughs> and uh, I, I would be fine with going ahead with this as a direction rather than the RFP but I'll let Joyce and Julie weigh in as well because th this would involve rejecting <laughs> the proposals both, both proposals that we got through the RFP I'm <clears throat> Both surprised and pleased to hear yeah. you say that. Um, I, that's essentially my view as well. Um, you know, it, you you had two weeks and you put together a rough proposal, which is equivalent, in my view, to the rather rough proposals that were put together by the two RFP respondents. Um, there are holes in yours, but there are holes in theirs as well. And I'm with Fred in feeling that there's been a lot of work done on this over the years by a variety of different people who all have investment in it, including the folks who um, reviewed the RFP responses. But I still, I agree, I would be inclined to um, put it into your hands to come up with even more. And I think I see the main problem is just funding. I don't doubt that you can come up with something to do with it, but funding is going to be the issue. Judy, yes. I'd like to talk to that a bit. Um, yeah. There, I think there are two things that made this proposal viable. One is the existence of this underutilized property grant, which seems made for it. Mm -hmm. That program is extremely well funded. We have twenty one million dollars. Okay. Um, the average grant was four hundred and seventy thousand dollars, and they get about fifty grants. Uh, no match. All good. The other thing that has changed is that the CPA 
has had several years of relatively small project demand. We're currently bringing in $200,000 a year. Uh, this year's request came to $21,000. There is over $400,000 in unallocated funds sitting there at going into just to notice all the she put the numbers together. <laughs> She knows, Sounds familiar. She knows it by heart. Um, going into fiscal year 25, there will be $40,000 in the historical preservation bucket. I think between the housing trust and the housing CPA bucket, housing people have $230,000. There is $400,000 of what we call unallocated. Um, <clears throat> that's can be used on any of the three eligible categories. So that's, you know, that's $450,000 left. No, it's $650,000 sitting there. From the town, and you're looking at okay. grants and other things. Yes, yes. It, it, it's going to take more than more than that, that, right? Yeah, understand that. But there's two hundred thousand dollars a year, and one hundred eighty thousand dollars a year is available for this. If you wanted to put the all in this, which nobody afford to do. Now, okay. I'm, obviously, I'm not. But I think when we took on the town hall. <clears throat> We're looking at a million four, mm -hmm. twice this amount of money, and the CPA was only bringing in one hundred thirty-five thousand. So the the amount of cushion and support that the town has to to back the grants is huge. And the other thing is, the CPA has been there for since twenty eleven, giving out money. We've given out over $2 million of CPA money. There hasn't been a single housing project request in that time. Mm -hmm. The CPC would love to give more money to housing. And the housing committees have problems finding projects with a scale that they thought they could fund. And I'd like problems. to speak to that when an opportunity arises, please. Yes. Uh, yeah, Judy, when you're finished. Yeah, I, I don't mean to imply that they haven't been <laughs> putting part because I know they have and I know they've been concerned. But but um, I just what I wanted to say is I know the CPC um, would really like them to see a bigger share of the unallocated money going forward, not just their book. Mm -hmm. um, okay, Catherine? Yeah, um, so I didn't find out about this very clearly until the weekend. Um, so yeah, I can didn't- you, Can you clarify for me who you're representing, a committee no. or- Of course, Catherine Wilkowitz, I'm the housing committee chair. Uh, and you. I also sit on the community preservation committee. Um, Thank you. Part of the reason I'm here and have been on the community, well, really on the housing committee is because my <laughs> professional background is that I have over 16 years of experience working with um, nonprofit affordable housing developers in Western Massachusetts. Um, and that's the piece of this proposal that I'm here to talk about. Um, I have some concerns about the ownership piece of this that I think probably would get worked out in the if given more time to sort of look at this uh, I don't think it's appropriate for a town to actually own housing because of multiple liability issues that you run into with housing and lawsuits and things that I don't think there's a way towns typically of this size certainly don't do that but the piece I want to talk about is something I've had to talk about at the housing committee over the last couple of months. And I know it kind of runs contrary to what has been happening in the news, but I just want to explain the funding environment for nonprofits looking to do housing in Massachusetts. And so um, for 
many years, small towns like Waitley would have been able to do small projects by which I mean a scale of say 12 to 18 units um, using a variety of sources provided through the state of Massachusetts by applying for through a one-stop application, which basically has all the different sources sort of at in one place. They call the one-stop application one-stop because it basically has um, all the departments that have housing funds to give out looking through it and figuring out how to fund these various projects through the state. So currently the minimum, that's where you get funded for any of these projects. So the minimum number of units at the moment um, you need to have in a nonprofit project is 20. So oh. this project wouldn't be able to have any funding from the state of Massachusetts to move forward. And it's not close, right? Like we can't say, oh, if we man manage to double the size or scale, we could get funding. That's This is just the way it works um, right now. There used to be a funding program called the Community Scale, Community Housing, Community Scale Housing Initiative. I think I've got it in my my notes because I'm always forgetting the acronym and the the name. But they haven't been using that or allocating any funds to it for the last two or three years. Um, part of the reason is because I guess over the last five years, housing costs have gotten so high that the cost per project has almost doubled from what it was five or six years ago, and they just don't feel like small projects are can be financially viable. So I I'm I'm coming to just raise some red flags before things go too far. I certainly want there to be a housing project in Waitley, but I want the project in Waitley to be well funded, solid construction, not need to cut corners and actually be the right size for our town. A two unit another two unit down the street from our one existing two unit would be beautiful. However, I I don't see how that funding could happen. And I confirmed and spoke with the housing director um, from Valley Community Development um, Corporation today and yesterday from the housing director at RDI, which is the only nonprofit developer in Franklin County. I think both of those were on Judy's list of possible nonprofits. Um, I also called and heard back from the Community Builders, which is a larger scale sort of building nonprofit. And um, not only did when I asked if they'd have any interest in partnering with us for a unique project that may be in included commercial space with only two units, I said, well, what if we joined it with a 12 unit, like the there is a project I'm still hoping we can magically reinstitute this old funding for, right, for ourselves. And she said, no, we're looking at projects in the scale of 70 or 60 or more to actually make operating costs viable moving forward. And that's even with very low debt service. So I, I just have some real concerns I'm not going to try to speak to the existing because I didn't look at, I didn't have any part in the RFP process. Many years ago, I had an opportunity to go in the building with someone and, and look at the building and talk about its suitability for something like this. And we passed on it because in my experience of working with an agency that has multiple, that has scattered site housing in communities just like Waitley and Cummington and Goshen and Chesterfield and Worthington. We couldn't make even 12 units or 14 units work financially for any of these projects. It's really, really hard. So I'm really concerned about how this kind of a partnership would work. And I'm concerned about the ownership structure. I don't really want to say yes or no to anything right now, but I just felt like the idea that there would easily be a nonprofit partner um, it, that's probably not not really true. It would be hard work to get someone to be able to partner with us. Um, I suspect once this is flushed out a little more, should the committee, should, should the select board choose to go forward, 
a group of people would be able to meet with the housing director at Franklin County at RDI, Rural Development Inc., which is the nonprofit arm of the Franklin County Re Housing and Redevelopment Authority. That might be something that could happen, um, but I'm still not sure they'd be able to support all the complexities that come with affordable housing. There's fair marketing requirements. There's all kinds of other things that we'd need something, someone like that to help us with, but I just, I just don't know. They're not any longer in the market of trying to support these tiny projects. Mm -hmm. They're starting to think our county needs a whole different model for managing affordable housing and creating affordable housing, which is very disappointing. I'm not coming advocating for that as a, a point. It's very disappointing. I'm really frustrated. And right at this moment, I don't think we know what that new model is going to be. What I think is is that it's hard because affordable housing is very complex, and I don't think us as a group of volunteers would be able to manage our own entity through all the complexities that are involved in in um, affordable housing. So I I've said it a number of times. I apologize for bearing what I feel like is is less than positive news, but I, I just felt it was the responsible thing to do to lay out that like nonprofit piece because that's where my professional background is currently and in the past. Yeah. Thank you. Judy, another comment? Well, I'd like to, you know, I obviously respect Catherine's opinion. I've been sitting in on housing committee meetings lately and I know this is a huge problem. Um, I do think though that this proposal was not designed to get around the much of that. And that's one reason for the nonprofit approach. It helps with a lot of the expense problem. I don't know how many of you know that the Smike's house, I think over half the cost of rehabbing that was from volunteer labor and in kind donation. Mm -hmm. There were 27 volunteers working on it. Um, so there is good cost benefit to that that we did not take any account of in this proposal. If we can't find a nonprofit partner, and I find it it's so interesting to me that uh, Catherine and the, all the people working in town on affordable housing get a well, we can't do this from from our DI, and yet their chair is trying. There was an op-ed piece in the Recorder. She's saying, oh, we can do anything. We're, we're so good at what we do for, for Franklin County. We She's trying to, to consolidate so that they can actually try to consistently cover their costs and not yeah. have to be going into debt to refurbish apartments well, and things as much. It, yeah. It's not, it's a different, yeah. Um, she wants to expand to consolidate with Greenfield. I don't know too many nonprofits that would turn down cash. It seems to me you get cash flow from paying staff to do what they're already doing. But if we can't find a nonprofit, um, we can form one. I do not intend, there's no thought here that the nonprofit would try to administer, but the nonprofit could hire a contractor to do the construction work and they contract and it could hire someone to do the administration. Um, there's a there's a housing uh, circuit rider, and they sent me some information on regional housing administration. And I noticed that the town of Concord uses a consultant for theirs. Um, there, so there are consultants that could be hired to do this, in addition to the nonprofits that we do this. Um, Again, well, and Franklin County was trying, the FERCOG was trying for years to develop a program that would ha hire a part-time housing person to serve multiple towns in Franklin County. We were really the only community in the county that had both the interest and the potential funds to be able to support that program. They okay. couldn't get another town sort of interested yeah. in getting yeah. to that point. 
let's just you know we're we're getting off into the yes. weeds. Right. I just I just had an <clears throat> email today from Burkhog, their annual report. So this is just for my own edification here. They they're talking about the growth the rural and small town development fund. And certainly we're rural and small towns, but these monies are should be uh, presumably some of which uh, they give out five five hundred thousand maximum grant. And I think that's well, when they're talking about small and rural town development, I think that housing is and catering to mixed interests and a, a lot of the a lot of the uh, areas that we're trying to address by renovating this building or bringing it back into service are all things that I understood from reading, and this is a very short uh, art uh, piece on it, but seems to me would be very applicable to Catherine. You probably know a lot more about this than I do. I mean, it was on the one stop state page. Uh, was it? I was just going to ask where the where you got the, the email was from FERCOG for their annual report, or did yeah. I mishear that? Yeah, it was the FERCOG annual report they sent around. Yeah. Okay. To the, to us, to the finance committee. Yeah. And, uh, well, right. And, and I made fresh. I made fresh calls yesterday because I. I thought like I have been out of the industry. I mean, for you know, since a little bit before COVID started. So it's you know I wanted to make sure that I was clear because I was surprised when I over the last few months found out that the the community small town small scale housing initiative the one whose name I can't remember had had gone away. Because that had been something I'd kind of been quietly just expecting to get to use when we got to a certain point in our town. Um, but I'll definitely look at that um, yeah. as well. Uh, and I can keep uh, people posted. I don't think it's for us to get into the, all the weeds no, and, right. yep. and everything tonight. But I think we've got enough of a basis to that Jenny, re, you know, formulate the committee, move ahead, try to get, you know, you know, more flesh on the bones of what we're talking about, what funding sources are possible, what what uses we want, you know, how much housing element, how much public facing, you know, whether it's a cafe or a meeting or something. But I, mean, I would like to see some some sort of public use or accessibility to the building, not just private residents. Um, and okay. how, how possible that is, we don't know at this point, mm -hmm. but I, I would love to give them more time to, to run with this and flesh out some of these, some of these issues, you know. And if I understand correctly, the, the primary thing that we really want to have happen is, is roof repair. Is that correct? That's the immediate. The immediate. That's, the, that's the immediate. The immediate not primary, immediate. Yeah, that's, right. the, that's the appropriate right. word. Um, immediate to prevent further deterioration of the building. So yeah. be, ha be, very happy really be very happy to see some progress on that and some mm -hmm. numbers and proposals about that. It, you know, and that's, that's where I'll fight in, especially, I mean, I was, I sat in on the committee in the beginning as the building superintendent of the town, I can tell you the structural issues with that roof is, it's horrible, and it, so it's a lot more than just getting up and replacing the slate. Mm -hmm. When we had Bill Dickinson about 30 years ago get up and do some great work on it, at that point in time, he had said it was at its, it was, the, the slate is original, it was at its, had seen its lifespan. The other big issue is that the, the rafters have separated from the plate in, on the south side of the building and so that there's got to be a lot of structural aspects of the roof that has got to be repaired just the rafters before you can even think of putting a new roof on it so somebody's got to get in there and determine just how much money's got to be needed just to get that roof to get it Tightened up so that the water doesn't run in there every rainstorm like it does right now. <clears throat> well, I think that and that would be where this committee would come in to to present some of those answers, and you know, 
we need X hundred thousand dollars to get <laughs> to repair the right. the infrastructure and then whatever for the roof. But I think if you, Jenny, if you can get you know that committee yeah. and work with Keith and work with the housing committee and sort of be a coordinating committee on, um, and you know we'll give you some time to do this, not two weeks. Uh, <laughs> <Tuna>. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I would love to get some more quotes on it, Keith. I don't know if you'd look at the quotes from the that the RFP candidates suggested. I, I've seen that I scanned through what they were proposing, yes. Um, yes. So, you know, that's probably the most recent quotes that have been done. Um, and actually, What's Sear and what's the other guy's name? Dilamari. Yeah. 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 He has offered to share his quotes, the quotes yeah. they got, um, which is lovely. So, you know, there's even no, if we don't use right. their proposal, right? right. He sent me an email saying, Fantastic. Yeah. Sadly, great. great you're working on this. And, and we'll also have to know, you know for instance, what if this might be CPA fundable. And like not, I don't know whether any of it is all of it is. What? All of it is. So repairing the in the as long as it's the not, rafters and the as like. As long as it's not routine maintenance. I mean this is definitely this not is routine. Definitely. It's not routine. Okay. Well we can then work with our various committees, housing, CPA, Keith and the building department, and let's make this a, a group effort to to move forward with this, um, we would need to get, <clears throat> excuse me, an application and to the CPA by the second Tuesday in June. But that can be have it doesn't have to have final numbers for that. But before you took it to a public hearing in town halls, you would probably need actually formally bids at that right. point. So, mm -hmm. So if you can make that the priority of getting those numbers from from the proposal and see if we can. Can I yeah, make sure. a comment on yeah, Lynn, the bid process? Yes. Um, you know, the the private sector can go out and just get quotes from various people. We actually have to go through a bidding process. Um, anything over a hundred thousand dollars. They have to be decamp. Uh, the builder has to be decamp certified. Which, mm -hmm. in order to be decamp certified, you're going to be a. You aren't going to be your neighborhood roofer. You're going to be someone who does this, uh, does big projects. Mm -hmm. So that all of these things kind of add to the cost of a bid. Um, we kind of learned our lesson when we did the police station. We kind of got local bids on everything. And it was around, I think, 90 some odd thousand dollars that we had gotten in local bids. When we actually put it out to a formal bid, came in at 165,000. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you look at, um, I'm just concerned about um, just coming up with bids from local people. And then when we actually go out to bid, it's going to be. Well, we should take that into account when you go out and right. look at costs. A consider who, who the bidders are and then they can't be certified and they have okay. to pay prevailing wage. Um, there's a whole bunch of different things. Yeah. So I it, assume that whatever numbers you're getting are going to come in probably double. I would probably, yeah, yeah at least 50% higher. Right. Uh, which is fine. Then we can work with that as long as we know that that's an right. issue. There are several slate yeah. of experts on the uh, Historic preservation list that I'm sure we can consult with. Okay. Joyce, do you have any oh, comments? I have so many. <laughs> I don't really even know where to start. Um, I understand. I I see that this document says the Center School Visioning Committee too, and I've heard tell of 27 people, but I don't see 27 names anywhere on yeah, here. So I'm wondering fine. if anyone can provide a list of names. Excuse me, let me finish, please. 
I would like to have a list of names of the people who are going to do all of this volunteer work because the, the things you're there. Group of volunteers who are not run out of steam. They're going to run into walls. There's they're they. I I don't think you're going to succeed based on what I've read here. I think your probability of success is really low. And some of the reasons are I don't think you have realistic. I, Oh, no, 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 back. Okay. No, yeah, keep sorry. <laughs> yeah. We're losing at least. I keep getting kicked out of the meeting. I, 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 yeah. Basically, I, I don't think it is realistic to expect the amount of work you're trying to propose to do be really done by a volunteer group, which is what the, this committee is. And, and I only know a few of the people because Jenny signs things and Judy signs things and there might be other people here who are also in this group but I think that's that's a lot and many of the things you're asking are things that are going to fall on the employees of the town to do like you're going to be asking whoever our next town administrator is to be really involved here you're going to be um, mm -hmm. asking Sylvie to be involved here and it's going to be taking those resources away from other things that they could be doing. Um, I, I'm worried about that. Um, I, I'm just worried that you'll expend a tremendous amount of effort to come to the same conclusion that we came to at the start of this, which is we don't have the money or the staff to do this, to do it right, to do it within the law. Okay. So my main problem with the proposal is I think it's got far greater than 50% chance of failure. It is probably not going to work as a, a volunteer-led group because you need a lot more resources than I think the town can offer. That's that's my main thing. I think the cost of the roof, I I think it's going to be twice that, what's in your budget. Um, I don't know of these 27 people, how many have actually been in the building for any length of time? you know, sit in that room and think about if this was where you lived. Well, I mean, is is that actually a good place to live? It's kind of far from transit. Um, it is a nice little downtown to live in, but they're going to need cars. It's not really low-income housing. Low-income people often don't have cars, right? Uh, it, 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 it doesn't really seem like, I mean, I, I, I applaud your effort but i just I, I think the numbers are way underestimated i think if you took every i mean that was one of the criticisms we had of one of the rfp folks was that they assumed that we were going to fork over every penny of our our um community uh, of our community preservation money to them to do whatever they needed to do with the outside of the house and if we didn't give it to them they were going to walk away. That's what they wanted in their contract. And I kind of feel like in some ways you're asking the same thing in a way. You're saying, well, we need all that CPC money to fix the roof. And then we'll sort of figure out if we can get grants for anything else. And I don't know that, I mean, you can't count on getting grants. State tax revenue has been kind of going down in the last bit. And we know that Grants for good things are the first thing that gets cut out of the state budget. I just don't think this is a very realistic proposal. And I understand that tonight I might get voted down. I might be in the minority here, but I think it would be irresponsible of me to just put on rose-colored glasses and look at this proposal and say, wow, isn't this great? I would love it if all those things happened, but I just don't think they're going to. So... <laughs> Um, and and I'll I'll late uh, uh, offline. You can give me the list of twenty seven names of the people who have committed, to however many hours a week they're going to commit to making this happen. 
Well, the 27 people that Judy mentioned were people who worked on the Smike Act. That was not related to people who were volunteered for, for this. But just, still, a list of people's things. names, people who've made a commitment and are willing to sign their name, that's what the people who did the RFP did. They put down what they were willing to bring to the project, and you know, they and many of them were bringing resources in to the tune of you know millions of dollars, and they put it all on the line. And here, that's to me, it's like, well, you know, we can apply for these grants, and the grants can be up to this much money, and so on. They can be sure. But we don't get every grant that we apply for. We apply for lots and lots of so we can tell you how many grants we apply for. And we don't get all the grants, even though we might think we deserve them. I just I I don't think this is gonna work. That's well, 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 Jenny, that's my I caution. And I and it goes forward and it starts eating up all of I don't know, whoever takes Lynn's place this time, uh, or Sylvie's time, or yeah. our ability superintendent's time. I mean, those are all things that are that that we pay for. Uh, if they're not doing their regular job, and they're putting all their time into this, well, so Jenny, I guess uh, I, I'm starting to repeat myself. So, yeah. thank you, Joyce. Yeah, thank you, Joyce. Yeah, I mean, there's several things I'd like to respond to. Um, you know, one, Fred clarified the number prop issue. What I said last time was that we had seven of the original ten people from the visioning committee respond to want to work on this. Those seven are the two, the number two committee, as opposed to the 10 on the first committee. Four of them are on this, are participating in this uh, meeting. Um, okay, can you uh, tell me the names? Because I know you and I know Judy, but I don't know all the others. Lee Harris, who's on Zoom. Uh, can you say the name again? The sound kind of cut out. Leslie Harris, who is on Leslie Zoom. Harris. Okay. Judy, you know me. Hey, Joy, 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 oh, is me. that Richard? Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. okay. So. Um, so the, there's four people then: Leslie, Richard, Judy, and Jenny. And Becky. Becky participated in our meeting, whatever day it was, Sunday, to help draft this proposal that we have. And Stan and who's the seven read it and commented on it. I mean, all, all seven said, people, not Mark, was, Mark is the you said, seven. Okay, I heard Stan, that's no. um, Stan. I, I, um, Okay, sorry, I, I just I'm not catching all the names because the, the audio yeah, is not great. Yeah. So and I think I know who Stan is Stan Stan uh, Scordillis, yeah. right? Yes, 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 and then Mark so Lucia. so that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Who did you say after Mark, Stan? Mark Boussier. Mark Boussier. Oh Mark Boussier. Okay. And how many hours per week have all these people committed to you working? Know, on? We're not there yet, Joyce. And as much as your concerns okay. about possibly failing are very legitimate, and Catherine's alluded to one specific piece that could enable that, um, my first response is the possibility of failure is not a reason to me to not try. Quite frankly, we've uh, done more. Everything can fail. It's not a possibility of failure. It's a probability of failure. I think it is much more likely than not that you will fail. Okay? And I don't I'm, feel that way about okay. all of the RFP people. So. Well, if I can <laughs> jump in here, I sort of agree with you on the RFP people. But to me, it doesn't matter. I, I don't think that the proposals that we got from the RFP serve the town particularly well. I would rather see this plan be given a chance to succeed or to fail. We're looking at what we're going to be doing for this building that's going to be there in 50 years, 100 years, 200 years. And I don't know that permanently turning it into one or two single family units 
is what we want in that location for the town for that length of time. And I'd rather give another opportunity for something that I think serves the town better, even if it may fail, but give it another six months, nine months, whatever, to see if we, if maybe if it will work, rather than going with one of these proposals that I just don't think is good for the town. And, and that's really where um, how I do you? Have, that's where I have come from in pushing for this. I mean, I, I do own property. I have rehabilitated property. This is not entirely new territory to me. This piece of property, which is literally one end of the historic district, has meaning to so many people in town for different reasons, is more than its facade. And the RFP proposals keep the facade, but nothing else community-based. And I have asked a couple people so far about donating some time. I've asked two licensed contractors if they would lead a work day. Um, I asked somebody else and he said, yeah, that's how Mike's building happens. Um, I, I personally am definitely envisioning this as a community process and project. And I know that's difficult. I deal with volunteer organizations a lot. I get that it's hard. But I think it's a value to the town. And you know, I, I'm not I'm not looking to own this building personally to do whatever with it. I'm looking for it to be a town resource that can provide a cafe and affordable in the housing in the sense that it's people can actually manage to pay their rent. It may not meet the regulated affordability in terms of uh, getting grant funding for it, but that's not the way I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about spaces that people can actually manage to live in. Um, and, you know, we've, we've had ideas about community space, including public bathrooms for the bikers who come through town because they love the view and they stop and they look at the view, but they don't have anywhere to go then unless they're late enough to go get a drink at the Waitley Inn. You know, let's create something where they'll come, come into the building and buy a breakfast or lunch or whatever. I, I, you know, I think those are all really wonderful. They're wonderful, wonderful ideas if it can happen. I just, I'm not against any of those things happening. I just don't think it's going to with this proposal. I think I've said my piece on that. The last thing I would say to Fred and Julie is we have to find a way to put a limit on what kind of a tax this is on our on our municipal employees. Um, and I'm and if, especially because if the building is still to be maintained ownership by the town, mm -hmm. then you know we have a responsibility for it. We, the, the, it. Jenny, honestly, it'd be easier to sell you the building and let you do whatever it is you want to do. You know, to to have have somebody else buy it because I think a lot of the complication comes from um, ownership by the town, which would require the town to do a whole whole bunch of things that we just don't have the resources to do. So I I I worry going forward about this project kind of taking over, sucking all the oxygen out of the room in the in that for Sandy Lane. And um we we have to find a way to make that, you know, keep functioning as a town. I um if, if, if I can respond to that, I on. think you're you're jumping way down the road here of assuming no, I'm, I'm talking about next week when somebody walks into Lynn's office and wants to know 
can you help me do this? Can you help me do that? Keith, can you come over and talk to me for three hours about what's wrong with the building? You know, the, those are real things that they're gonna that that are gonna probably happen. And I want to I want to put a limit on what this group can ask of our town employees. Is it is it reasonable to ask the town employees that we have present to weigh in on having had absolutely the town absolutely. hall renovation and what kind of uh, yeah and uh, but can I ask the town employees first and then I'd love and then I definitely want to hear from you. Um, having had experience with the town hall renovation, is this an accurate concern? And uh, if so, how do we help you put? How do we help put limits so you're you're not overtaxed? It's certainly gonna it's certainly gonna require time for the town employees to do that. Yeah, I'm I'm faced with pools of stuff right now with the town hall the failure of the town hall windows. Right, it's you know, that's on my docket later on in the night as it is. But it, that's why I'm here for that part. Of it. So yeah. I, I can't give you an, an exact amount, but yes, I'd be, I, I would be, I'm telling you, it will take time. And the yeah. same thing with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, back when we were doing the town hall project, that was one of my missions in the job. But right now, there's a whole bunch of other missions that the uh, town administrator is doing. Back then, there weren't quite so many, mm -hmm. so I did have a little more available time. But um, now we've got the huge road project. There's a lot of things going on right now yeah. um, that probably we couldn't afford to spend an awful lot of time. And given that we're we're only here right till yeah. June, yeah. <laughs> um, and we're not putting in forty hours. Just uh, thirty six. So um, the thirty six. It's a realistic concern. It is. A it, it, yes. it, it, it's a realistic concern, but I also think it can. We can try to minimize the the, uh, the call on this time as much as possible, especially in this phase. Because I envision the uh, this initial phase as. You know, taking this proposal and working it up more. Yes, it will involve some questions for Keith and maybe some questions for you. I don't know that in this initial phase it is going to be a, you know, that it shouldn't be that huge of an imposition on the town employees, if not given that it's really just you know, putting together a more filled out proposal. Mm -hmm. We're not looking to do the project now. We don't have a project to do now. Uh, but we're trying to find out if that project is feasible. Mm -hmm. um, Keith? I don't know, is there any way you can, of course, Brian isn't here anymore, but you try to quantify the out, amount of hours that town administrator has put into it already just getting into where we're at, which isn't very far at all in the, in the big picture. I mean, we don't have any more real answers now than we did years ago. You know, and it's no. kind of throwing money at it without even knowing what is going to be the next step. Well, as, 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 scary as, as of right now, to, to give more time to, for this, for Jenny and her committee to... Yeah. And I understand work on this proposal right. isn't going to cost us any more right. money. The minute we sign the sign the, the line to, to get rid of it, you're not getting it back. I right. get that. So right. I I understand that as and you know you, as an example, you look at Sunderland, how many RFPs did they have Seven. for what turned into the Blue Heron? Seven. These things can take time, but in the time horizon we're looking at of hundreds of years to take another year or two or three to do it right or as close to right as we can get it, as opposed to saying, let's just get it off our plate and take whatever I mean, there's what, no, whatever we've been presented. There's no doubt that the, the roof could be buttoned up by, by Band-Aids a little bit more, but the problem is you go up and replace one slate today and two weeks later, 
you'll have one one more coming off of it. So if you're well, they, constantly they, chasing that aspect. I think we may have to just make a decision to to do the proper job on the, the roof. Structure on the, roof. the structural job on the roof, not to do the band-aids, to do it right. When Constantly. that's a hard sell, I think that'll be a hard sell to the town and you don't know once you're putting that money into something, you don't know what you're gonna do with that at that point. That Judy had something to yeah, Judy, say. Yeah, Judy. Well, I was gonna talk about staffing and I think that's been covered, but um I think the town cares about this building and they also would be interested in more community uses. Um you think about it. This was a functioning school from 1990. A lot of people in town went there um, and do care about it. Um, it could be, you know, the grants wouldn't come in time. So it could be a hard sell, but I don't think it would be, I don't think it would be very hard. I, I want to just respond yeah. to the, you know, case last comment that one of the reasons the RFP committee objected to the one proposal was because it was asking for CPA money with the potent probable eventuality of then being a private property. We're we're not. We're talking about using CPA money with the probability of the town, the building staying town property. That's the intent. And I think that gives people a very different view of it. I would say either town property or somehow under town control, you know, whether through a not-for-profit or a housing authority or some other um, mechanism. A benefit to the town a in the broader right. sense. Right. A public right. building, not... And, and I, I also think that getting community support for using public money for the roof will not be hard if we can guarantee that the building will be used to some some public use and not you know we're not going to fix the roof we're not going to fix the roof and then tear down the building or or we sell had a hard time selling painting the town hall when we were in this same situation of not really knowing what we were going to do with the town hall but we knew that the town hall needed painting because it was really starting to deteriorate. We had a really hard time selling the paint job on the town hall, which was only, I think it was 60,000, 64,000, something like that. And it was a struggle. It passed, but it was a struggle um, because we didn't, in, 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 to follow up on Keith's comment, because we didn't quite know what we were going to be doing with the town hall at that time. Mm -hmm. So, well, ho hopefully we'll be able to get, if we can get a proposal back, if, if we get, you know, six months from now and we don't have anything, another proposal, we're right back where we are now. We're, we're not. We, we, so I, can I make a, we could be right back where we are, but we have no RFPs in. There's no way to even have somebody else salvage the building. Because but, we, we've mm, turned away. Okay. I, so we're not quite in the same uh, place. Um, that's I, just a point. I, I, think, I think where we differ is that I don't consider that either of these proposals that came out of this RFP to be viable. Who won that? Uh, I, I don't agree with you. And I think most of the committee who looked at them would say that at least one of them was viable. So I don't agree with you. I understand I'm getting voted down. I know as soon as the motion is made, it's going to be a two to one vote. I'm fine with that, but I've got to state my objections. I just feel like that has to be said. And I, I has also, to, it's a public meeting, and I that's also, what it's for. I also have a feeling that the one that the committee considered viable would probably still be out there in a year or two if we went back to it. No, but it would not be out there for, for that long. And long even people on our own historical commission have, have said that. The things that, that stop them from getting the blue school going will not be stopping them at the center school. And they're rolling at the blue school now, now that they've gotten past those problems. Catherine. Yeah, I just wanted to maybe make a suggestion around this. And I'm sorry. I Anyway, I think maybe considering not right now, but in the next two months or so by the time 
you're getting ready to say submit an application to the CPC for the roof repair, which is like the next big money exchange that will probably happen in saving this building is maybe if the select board could come up with the dollar amount that they think they and maybe the taxpayers would be willing to say like how much of Waitley's coffers, CPC, some other funds, maybe, yeah. What's the total amount we're willing to put in to preserve that community value? Because I agree that there's a community value in being able to preserve that building. But I also think in this particular case, it's maybe more likely than not that the cost is so expensive. It might say, we might get to where when we get abate, real abatement costs that we look at this and say, this is gonna be a $1.5 million project. It, if we don't think we're gonna get a lot of other funds, we I think there needs to be a maximum of what Waitley will be expending towards that. And so that's something maybe to look for as a select board to sort of say like, yeah, if we get these costs back and we do all our due diligence and it still means Waitley is gonna fork out a million dollars, that might be too high. Like that, just something along those lines. That's all, that's my suggestion. That's smart, thank you. Okay, and that's something that we can look at down the road. I down the road, we, exactly. Right. I have one more thing to yeah. say, and I'll try to say it yeah. quickly. Um, I know there's a lot of sentiment attached to the building, and there's a lot of feeling that it should be useful to the town. Um, and I agree also that it should be financially viable for the town going forward. Whatever space we use it for needs to be something that generates enough income that makes it worthwhile for the town to keep it. And cafes and restaurants are notoriously money losers as much as we'd like to see something like that. So I just want to keep in mind that we need to keep our minds open about what goes into that space that makes it feasible and of benefit to the town going forward and not just as, yay, we saved the center school. That's it. Okay, I think pretty well done. I think we're going to need them. Hi. We need two motions, don't we? We're going to need two motions. Uh, I would move that we reject both of the RFP responses, the one from Aubert and the one from Sear and Jellermini. I will second that. Any further discussion? Okay, to vote. Joyce. Uh, nay. Julie. Yay. Yay. Yay, rather. Not okay, two to one. We have another proposal. Uh, I move that we accept as an initial draft, the Center School Visioning Committee two proposal and give them up to six months to put more meat on the bones at specific financial, uh, specific numbers. So we're looking for something back by October 1st, let's say. And we would love it before then. We would love it before <laughs> then and communication before then. But I will second. Let's say let's say six months at the outside. Is it possible to ask for something with more meat on its bones within three months? If we get a progress report. Progress report and then go back again after six months, and then we'll make a final determination. Three, three months will take you up to the summer, and then you know, things will lag in the summer, because they always yeah. do. So, and then... Some something more or less final by October first. Is that yeah. okay? Fine. I I will second that. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. Julie. Aye. Joyce. Nay. Aye. Okay, so and I want to say that I appreciate the bracing sense yeah. of reality brought yeah. by the people who have either voted nay or have said that this is going to run into problems. It's always necessary to have that, yeah. and I I hear you. I and I fully understand it could run into problems. It may not succeed, but I think it's worth a try, and I think it's more worth a try than the two proposals that we got. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a letter from the historical commission. Uh, 
I think it, this kind of is almost moving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm, I'm just looking, looking <laughs> down again. Uh, but we still convey the venomous. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you convey the visioning committee. Uh, however, um, we are getting estimates on doing the easement for the historical society for the milk bottle. Mm -hmm. that okay. So the, the, this this will also give us time to to finish to get that settled, all settled, and uh, Paul. And yeah, I just need some clarification on who's doing what. The Center School Visioning Committee. And I was on the committee called the RMP committee, I believe, but I it was obvious after this vote that there is no such committee anymore, correct? I believe that that yeah, yeah maybe that, you, that that has done its job. Well, that's okay. I just want to know who's doing what. So the center school vision committee consists of you three. And I don't know. Leslie, 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 Stan. Oh, okay. The people you mentioned earlier. Okay. And I'm sure anyone else who wants to put in the work. Anyone else who wants to. Okay. Thank you. Go for it, Paul. Yeah, go on. Oh, no. Good luck. Okay. So. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so we will look at the easement or the redrawing of the property line or whatever so that the milk bottle. We'll have a permanent place in front of the center school right. building. Okay, next uh, item: insurance on the center school. Yeah. Um, I'll let Trisha handle that one. I think she got a new. Estimate. So the renewal for the um, center school proposal is due by April first. We've obviously been delaying this for a while given the discussion that just took place. Um, since there's no real property or personal fixtures, yeah. personal property in the building, mm -hmm. we got a new quote um, today, which um, saves us 68 dollars <laughs> <laughs> Put that toward uh, the roof. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> yeah. So basically, it's just Regular coverage, but also terrorism and all sorts of new things that municipalities need now. So, be a motion to renew that. Uh, with, with the terrorism yeah. rider, yeah. and well, you can you, you can, can choose, choose not, not to, to get terrorism. Terror. What actually constitutes terrorism? Like, I'm assuming it doesn't mean international terrorism. Like, if somebody came in and said, "I believe in X." And I'm going to blow up the school to show you that that's terrorism. There is, um, there is, is there a definition of terrorism is any act or acts that is certified by the Secretary of the Treasury in consul consultation with the Secretary of Homeland Security and the Attorney General of the United States to be an act of terrorism be a violent act or an act that is dangerous to human life, property, or infrastructure to have resulted in damage within the United States or outside the United States, blah, 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 blah. So, <laughs> so we paid additional $181 for that, but if we, we choose not to get that coverage, we have to sign away our life saying it's at our peril. So the total renewal for the policy is $3,800. But should we convey the building to a third party at some time during the year, we will get a refund on mm -hmm. that. Um, but obviously, given the discussion, I would ask the board for a motion to uh, vote to renew the policy um, for FY25. Would it, would it make your lives much more difficult if we excluded the terrorism? I don't see the center school as a major terrorist target. <laughs> No, I think for a hundred something dollars, it's worth it. <laughs> Just in case somebody's well, I feeling cranked. <laughs> I think it's worth it. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Um, somebody's feeling cranky and there's a match. Well, that's, that's basic arson. That's not terror. <laughs> uh, okay. Do I have a motion? I move that we renew the insurance uh, as. As per the documents we have in front of us here, including the terrorism. <laughs> and I will second that. Any further discussion? Joyce. Hi. Julie. Hi. 
Uh, <clears throat> okay, next item, letter of support for 75 plus acre land acquisition by the Department of Fish and Game, Assessor's Map 6-0-12 and 6-0-23. Currently owned by Gary Gemi and David Wojciechowski. So you have um, in your packet a copy of the location of that map and the owners. And uh, this is a total of 41 acres showing on assessor's map of lot 12 and lot 23. Um, lot 23 consists of 15 acres, lot 12 consists of 26 acres. The value of lot 23 is $455. And uh, lot 12 is 7986 for a total value of 16441 That would now go into tax exempt status. But you can see that it's backland and straddles Hatfield. And the fishing game is asking for a letter of support and acquisition of this property. So it says 75 acres. Is that the part that goes over in the yeah, field? Yeah, our additional acres together. Yeah, our portion would be what I just mentioned. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, this is at the south end of Long Plain Road. It doesn't actually touch Long Plain Road no, in, it's in, back plans. Yep. in Waverly. Yep. Uh, any comment? So tell me about the tax status again. So once it would be acquired by Fish and Game, it would become tax exempt. Tax exempt. Well, they pay their high pay payment in lieu of taxes, but it's yeah, a fraction. Is a and do you get that's <laughs> why I can say tax? Yeah. <laughs> I'm assuming we don't get much from that to begin with. Well, they lump it all the all the um, state-owned property in one sum and pay it on your cherry sheet. Yeah, it's not. I mean, it's I mean, not a lot. I Forty can't. acres would be. Yeah, de minimis, yeah. Mm -hmm. pretty much. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> yeah. But the value of sixteen thousand is not giving us a huge amount of tax yeah. either. So yeah, that's that's more my question. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's not. I know you're not allowed to sell it. Keep paying us tax. It's not currently buildable because there's no front. Right. Yeah. Right. So basically, they're just requesting a letter of support yeah. for them to proceed with this for their acquisition of the property. Okay. Sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and, and the benefit to us is basically that we have more protected land in town. Right. right. It would be, yes, of recreation. And do we need to vote? Do we need a motion? Uh, um, just, um, just the letter of support. So yeah. I don't know that you have to. I, don't think you okay. I guess okay. it would hurt, but. I don't think we need a motion. <laughs> but I could be wrong. Okay. If we don't need a motion, we don't. I'll draft that letter. Uh, Okay, moving along. Uh, appointment of the animal inspector. I brought this up at our last meeting, and I've done a little more research since then. Uh, Rick Adamcheck did say he would be willing to stay on until June 30th. Okay. Um, he basically, I asked him whether he might consider staying on longer than that, and he basically said, not at what they pay me. So, <laughs> um, and I also checked with the uh, Franklin County Sheriff's Office on whether the animal control program there would also encompass the animal inspector program, and it does not at this point in time. So uh, because the uh, Division of Agricultural Resources requires that the animal inspector be appointed in a for April 1st, um, Rick did say he would go on until June. So we'd have a few months, if we appointed him now, we'd have a few months um, to come up with another solution. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And it's maybe one of those solutions is to look at what we're really paying them in comparison. Right. And I did do, we did, we too. We did grab yeah. some information and very low. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, okay. So that will be on the salary survey for review by the personnel committee. So uh, I will make a motion to renew uh, Rick Adam Check as that inspector of animals from. This date through June 30th. Second. 
Further discussion? Julie? No. No, sir. <laughs> no further discussion. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> you're, you're, you're both. <laughs> Aye. <laughs> Joyce. Goodness. Aye. Aye. Have a look at her face. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you, you positive have been outvoted on that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, everybody gets to get outvoted sometimes. Uh, to review, discuss, and vote on intent to become a member of the Franklin County Sheriff Office Animal Control Program. Okay. Yes, Rick, it's not, also it's an animal inspector. Right. right, it does not include animal inspector, and Rick is really does want to give up the animal control officer at, as of June thirtieth as well. Um, this program really seems to fit the bill, but we would need to do a letter of interest to them uh, just to um, start the ball rolling, and they have to vote. In this, the contract that they provided us is. Uh, just a draft, so they would. Um, it says fifty two hundred, but they told, said don't take that as being carved in stone at this point. So I think our letter of intent would get things moving, and we'd come up. They would come up with a better estimate on that cost, and, and they'll come back with a, a yeah. formal proposal. A formal, right? So we can uh, draft up a letter if if this is what you choose to do. Um, that we are interested in the program and go from there. <laughs> I see no reason why we would not be interested in the program. It seems to, it, it seems to um, our needs. and one no of the needs. things with yeah. animal control lately is there's a lot of training. So finding a volunteer that wants to commit for hours and hours worth of training is hard. Um, so these would already, these people here would already be trained. Um, and it's all part of the package, so. I understand from talking with Chief about it briefly that the regional office and local control officer actually has more enforcement powers than our local. Yes, they're would considered have. police officers right. in general, so they have arrest powers. Mm -hmm. So if things get out of hand at a scene, right. they can arrest right there. Which um, our local officer would not. Right. And they would have to call in the police to come to the scene. So um in this instance they can it's kind of they can handle everything. Yeah. Okay. Any discussion? No. That was not a vote. No. <laughs> we don't have a motion yet. <laughs> Do I have a motion? Sure. I move. Move. Let's Pursue the uh, joining the animal control. Sorry, maybe you should do the motion. <laughs> well, you started. You go for it. Okay. Um, I move that we pursue uh, joining the regional animal control group. Program. <laughs> the Franklin Program. County Sheriff's. The Franklin animal. County Sheriff's. Regional program. Uh, so Second. we pursue it. So that leaves it open ended. If it. Okay. Yeah. Any further discussion? Vote. Joyce. Aye. Julie. Aye. Aye. So we'll draft up a letter and get it and ready for them. Good. Uh, okay. On to. County Administrator updates. So Lynn and I thought it would be good to report to you what we are working on, and that's why you see initials beside each item, so you know who's doing what, and who, who's on first. <laughs> we're we're still ready we're, to do that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so let's just act three. We're getting a little better <laughs> each week. Um, so. Um, just to let you know that um, we got our second installment of opioid settlement funds, just to refresh your memory, 60% of the funds go to the state, 40% are distributed among 351 municipalities for uh, to fund prevention, harm reduction, treatment, and recovery programs. They go into a dedicated stabilization fund that we've established. We had $14,000. Um, dollars in it already, according to Amy, and the next uh, amount of payments that were scheduled 
to receive is $12,682. So, and I can confirm those came in this week. So, oh, they did come yeah. in. So, <laughs> I'm proud to ask you. I saw that. Do, do we program any programs in place? Not yet. Um, I don't know if that was ever brought up as a topic of discussion. I don't, I don't recall. Mm -hmm. Us having discussed that, and then question whether it would be done through the schools or you know through elementary yeah, school yeah. or through frontier. So the categories identified uh, for uses uh, for small communities such as ourselves, it's obviously a challenge. Mm -hmm. So regional approaches, working with regional health districts, so for, for police departments to get training and say the use of Narcan and things like that. So there's lots of opportunities. With this second installment, that brings us down to about twenty six thousand. Um, you know. There's now, I think, more of an opportunity to begin to talk about having that kind of discussion so we can follow up with the Chief of the Board of Health. Mm -hmm. cool. uh, the next thing was the Toro Verde. Um, we received a, a request for information on how much, how much costs we had above and beyond the usual business oriented costs um, have been put out for the Toro Verde um, marijuana site. I talked to Brian and he indicated that as far as he was aware, there were no additional costs mm -hmm. above and beyond their usual cost. So uh, we've drafted a letter to them just stating that that's the case. Okay. So, um, and he can probably, Talk about the window situation. <laughs> sure. Um, my involvement got it came with this in regards to when I was asked to solicit a quote to have the window removed and replaced under the warranty. As you know, the, the company is willing to stand behind the windows and remake them and. So they'll, they'll be responsible for taking them away, repairing them, remaking them, and delivering them back. But our obligation is to remove the windows, set them on the ground, and then when they come back, we have to reinstall them. So that's where I'm at. I talked to um, J.D. Ross. He suggested that I contact Greenfield Glass and get an estimate for Greenfield Glass. Did that. I submitted that quote to Trish, and that quote is $6,250. The interesting aspect of it is in my discussion with Greenfield Glass, Nick was the person I had talked to, and he said, it's what you're doing is probably just gonna happen again. And I'm saying to myself, well, these windows were put up in 2018, some of them have already been replaced once. Now, when when we put the pressure on Allied and Window, and Trish has the email that just came yesterday, the day before, they say that they're going to fix them this time and we're on our own. And so I'm getting conflicting reports from another company saying it's going to happen again because the film is exposed to moisture. It's not, they're not sealed. That if we're spending six thousand dollars to get them fixed now, in five years or three years when they're all pink again, what do we do? Can I back you up for a second to why did Green Greenfield Glass said it's just going to happen again because they're exposed to moisture? He said the, the film that they're applying is is exposed to moisture. So uh, this is like beyond my my knowledge of you know, specialty in windows. So mm -hmm. I feel like before we decide to move forward, we've got to either we're gonna to have to continue with maybe legal aspect, which Brian was already was looking into, or coming up with uh, some other third party professional input I just hate to spend six thousand dollars and in three years have yellow or pink windows again and have no warranty left because they're saying they will not stand behind them ever again. I'm curious about the the 
sentence, the second paragraph, I worked hard to get our glass manufacturer to run tests on the problem units. To my surprise, they accepted responsibility. But were tests ever exactly. run? We sent were tests run? I don't know. We sent and again, this is another aspect. We had to go in and remove two of the windows. Yeah. Brought them here. We had to ship them at our expense. Yeah. And I don't know what's happened. I don't know anything about it. I would want them to put the windows into a condition is, similar to what we have here and then tell us what happens. Which was another concern I remember saying to Brian, I almost felt like the windows should have gone to a third party. Yeah. Yeah. Not send it back to the manufacturer, but either way, they, they did agree to replace all the windows at their expense. But again, the, the part that is disconcerting is when they say, yeah, yeah. we're on our own from here on out. And the fact that the real problem was at the job site. Yeah, and, and <laughs> yeah, something doesn't make sense, yeah. especially now when I'm being told that they're exposed to moisture, it's gonna happen again. Yeah, I think we need some third party Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, objective take on this. I can look into it a little bit more as far as trying to come up with who that third party should be or what. But yeah, I, if, if when I did talk to Greenfield Glass, I said, "What would be the? Would we be better off just putting a storm window up with no?" low-E yeah. film on it, mm -hmm. and he said that might be an option. And did the fellow at Greenfield Glass actually see the window? Yes, they yeah. came to the site he to give it, me an estimate on the cost to have them been removed and replaced. But I don't have that in writing. Yeah. You know, what his, his what he told me is just verbally, he did not, I don't have anything in writing from him. I didn't. We weren't at that point. He just was in conversation, okay. saying that he thinks this will happen to us again. And, and mm -hmm. if he thinks it's going to happen again, I think that going without the coding. Right, and that's is, another but, thing I wanted to talk to. Maybe I'll have an opportunity since we just got this email again. I'd like to talk to George Dole again. Mm -hmm. um, Get his. I don't know if he's willing to do it without charging the town or not, but I'd like to talk to George because he was a key element in uh, Jones Woodson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I bet he would. He would take your questions. Is it yeah. the same on both both sides of the building? It does all. It all of them. Every all I'm just wondering because some one side gets a lot more sun than the other side. It's just. And that pink staining, especially when you try to look at it and the sun is shining, it's like you think the window hasn't been washed in 30 years since that bad. Yeah. No, and it, it doesn't make sense to have this happen again in a few years with no recourse. And I don't. And you can't, and we're not in a position where we should take them off, period, because the whole concept of the window is those, the, the original windows set so deep into the, that the, the rain is going to come and pound against them and saturate. No, you need the storm windows in that building. It can't be left. If that's the case, it would have been better to have taken those those windows out totally and put brand new ones in. Yeah, but I, I, also, storm I also don't see any other legal alternative you know, going after the manufacturer. So it probably cost us more mm -hmm. in legal you know, I fees. I, I just asked Judy to stick around because she was involved in the in the build. I was not on that building yeah. committee, nor was I building superintendent at the time. So I don't know the history as to why they went with what they did. Judy, did, did you have a comment? Yeah, I, I think I was going to suggest going without the coding originally, but. Yeah. But I'm happy to. The um, Allied is actually one of the most highly regarded uh, storm providers for mm -hmm. historic buildings. And um, I know Jones works at 
I've talked to George Dole, uh, Joan, Joan Switzer has used them without any trouble. And when I was doing the church window restoration project, I put out a request on the historic preservation listserv for people to recommend storm window uh, providers. And they they got twice as many references as anybody else. So, and also their their standard window um, is, which fits in the frame and is essentially invisible, was perfect for the design of the building. So that's that's why Ally was used. Um, I haven't. George told me that they're still using them, and that nobody else has had any problem. I don't know. I don't know how many windows they make with um, that are exposed on one side. Uh, my brother's an architect. He tells me that he's never seen a specification for a storm window other than a double pane one. And in those, in those, the this, uh, the film would be inside it's the sealed. vacuum it's sealed. Right. And I think that's our issue. But yet, but, why wouldn't Ally no. have said that? To no, I, and I, 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 if I remember correctly, I thought that Ally came back and they said, or the window company came back and said that it was a defect in the window. I thought that was something that Brian had mentioned. That it was. They were saying site site specific. But in the beginning, the reason why that they they took on the task of replacing all the windows on their behalf was due to a defect. That they had mentioned to us. I'm like almost positive that that was Ooh. a thing that was mentioned to Brian and that he mentioned the record of that. I could be most certainly look into that. Yeah. But 100%, I'm, I'm I like almost we, positive. We, we can go through and review the emails, but one of the things in the emails was that, um, about the fact that they were manufactured at different times. I remember seeing that. I'm not sure if defect is the correct word, but I'm, I'm I guess, sure it was something similar to that. You know, just to summarize things, my my recommendation right now is certainly to, we need to put it on hold. I'm yeah. not about yeah. just to mm -hmm. have Greenfield Glass come down here, and, and at the same point in time, we need to reach out to Allied and tell them we're not happy with the fact that we've had this problem yeah. and the windows only lasted for years and you want us to accept your statement of this will not be stood step they won't stand behind it ever again it's mm -hmm. that's horrible that doesn't make sense if they it, were willing to replace it especially when in that email where the company accepted mm -hmm. responsibility mm -hmm. without blocking you know, so it's not yeah, yeah. Let's, let, let's go back and check the emails and see. Yeah, I'll go All back right. and see what uh, I have on my end. I can, I can yeah. get Keith a list of other window providers. Yeah, I, I like I said, I think that might help to get some professional. Yeah, to get mm. someone else's opinion off of that list. Okay. Okay. I'll wait on you. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll look at the files. Jess, we can work on that. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Do we have anything else? I just have one quick thing. That yeah. I know it's not on the agenda, but it's it's not something that needs to be on the agenda in regards to any decisions made. I have chapter chapter 90 and the um, reimbursement paperwork also for the complete streets what was completed that needs to be signed by the board. It's the yes. stuff you've already approved. Yeah, I'll put it. Um, there's six ideas. Um, Let's make sure I get it. Austin wants an hour. Well, we can sign them now. We can sign them now. You start. <laughs> <laughs> There's six, six, yeah, there's six, six, okay. Oh, six, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why I asked if we wanted to do it now. Yes. Is this all your chapter 9? Yes. Okay. 
Yes, everything that went to the bank. Let's get the street. What street? The complete streets one? What streets did you do in the Chapel Hunter? Along Plain Road and Fairview Way. Without much study. You should remember what it is. Wait, look at Sandy Lane. It's slowly coming back. Hey, can you go back to you? I need to go to the class session. You want to pass the bell? You mean excited now as long as Keith is here. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments for open session? Um, Any other no issues? Um Okay. Uh I'll make a motion we move into executive session. Second. We have to say the purpose. Ah. Pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 31A, Section 21A, to discuss stretch sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-using personnel, 